Today we'll be learning how to create a Windows fake login screen to get the user's password. Oh yeah, remember kids, hacking is illegal. But of course the best hackers don't get caught, right? Now the question is, are you the better hacker? The first thing that you have, of course, is a computer. And of course, if you don't have a computer, then there's pretty much nothing else to hack is there. And of course, you got Hackaloy on the left, who is going to be running the attack against the user. And of course, in this case, what's going to happen is that Mr. Hackaloy will plan an executable into the target computer. And when the user executes onto this file because of a phishing attack, maybe a fake malicious attachment or whatnot that's downloaded from the internet, it then creates a fake login page that asks for the username as well as the password. And once the user enters the password, it is now going to be made available to HackerLoy for his use. <laughs> this sounds pretty easy, isn't it? Well, it actually is scarily easy to do. Oh yes, and one more thing. Have you not liked the video? Have you not turned on notification to the subscription to the channel? Do that right now so that you don't get hacked. Once you gain access to a Windows computer for whatever reason, later we'll show you some. You go over into this page, go github bits admin slash fake logon screen. And once you're in here, you can see this super useful utility to help fake the Windows logon screen so that the user enter the password and will be able to obtain a password for whatever you use. And you can see right here, all right, as you scroll down, there are two executables that's available, okay? The first one is going to be the fake logon screen that we can run directly, which outputs the value of the password into the console. And the second one, which is very useful, is that it outputs not only the console, but also to a file in local app data, Microsoft user.db. And once you're ready, go over into the releases. And you can see right here, obviously, I am on a Windows computer. So you can go ahead and click on the start. And you'll be able to see, this is literally a Windows computer that we're using, and we are targeting this. So once you're in here, there is a couple of options that's available for us, okay? And once you're ready, go ahead and click on the fake log on screen, underscore trunk.zip, go ahead and save over it. And you can see right here, I can click save. And you can see right now, we have downloaded the file, I'm done. Go ahead and open it up, all right? Extract to, and of course we can go ahead and extract this to the default location. So in this case, we have users, Loy Liang Yang desktop, fake logon screen, let's go trunk, click okay. Boom, we are done. We have now completed the download of the executables can give us the fake logon screen. I know what you're thinking. You want to do it way cooler, like a hacker. So to help you look cool, Go ahead and launch Kala Linux and go into the same GitHub page. And right here, we're on Bits Admin. All right, so again, we're at the binaries page, releases, and you can go ahead and click on the fake logon screen on scrotrunk.zip. So it's the same, literally the same zip file, but right now we're doing it in Kala Linux so that you look cooler. So go ahead and save that in. Boom, done. LS grep logon. Let's see what we get here. Fake logon screen, let's go trunk.zip, enter unzip, all right, followed by fake logon screen, and let's go trunk.zip, done. And what you can do right now is go ahead and enter ls, say for grab and .net, see what we get right here, cd over into .net 35, and we can enter ls once again, we get two options available. So we have fake logon screen.exe as well as fake logon screen to file. We have three main options right here. Option one, that is where we create a malicious attachment. And from the attachment we sent over from email to the user, and once the user clicks open onto the link, that's it, game over. We execute the Windows fake logon screen. The second option is where there is a vulnerability or opening in the computer, which we can take advantage of. And of course, we can target directly into the computer. And once we target that, that gives us access to the machine. And then we execute onto the malicious file, which gives us the ability to grab the credentials from the user. And the final option is where the user left the computer open because the user decided to run over into the washroom. In that case, we can now go over into the computer, download the file and execute on it. And that gives us again, the ability to get the user's credentials. Well, it sounds pretty easy, isn't it? Because it really is that simple. And what we're doing now is showing you option number two. And we have already done several of those options. Option number one and option number three is pretty straightforward too. So what I can do now is go ahead and enter search for eternal and I can use number one, which is PSEXEC. So this was where a vulnerability was available in a few years back and that led to lots of ransomware attack across the world. So that was pretty exciting times. All right, so what I can do now is go ahead and enter show options. And in this case, I can set the R host. So in 
this situation, we are targeting the IP address of the target machine. Okay, so in this case, we have 192.168.0.114, hit enter on that. And of course, separately, what we have here now is this is the L host. So L host is Colonix IP address, as well as L port is the Colonix port number they'll be using in order to get us access over into the computer. And once you're ready, go ahead and hit enter run. And you can see right here, sending stage, boom, in, game over. Next up, what I've done here is migrated over into an existing user process so that we are now able to execute on the user behalf. And all we gotta do right now is to upload the file. And what I can do here is enter, say, print working directory and see that we're now on users Loi Liang Yang desktop. And what I can do now is enter upload followed by fake, all right, log on screen. So let's go ahead and try the first one and see how it looks like. Enter that and done. We have now uploaded the file. Windows fake logon screen over into the following right here, okay? So what I want to do now is to see how can we go ahead and execute this on a target user. So go ahead and enter shell, all right? So once we're on shell, this is the place, all right, where we can take a look at how we can execute this file on behalf of the user. And if you look over here in the Windows 10 computer, everything is functioning as per normal, as expected, all right? The user could be browsing the internet whatnot. So what I can do now is go back to Kyle Linux. I go ahead and execute on fake log on screen dot exe in three, two, one, hit enter on that. Jump back over into the Windows computer and see what we get right here. Boom, the fake log on screen. <laughs> let's go ahead and capture the password. So let's see how to use it now. I go ahead and enter my password because there's a problem. Let's see what happens. I hit enter on that. I'm locked back in again. But now if I go back to Kyle Linux, you can see right here, we are logging everything that the user is typing. And we can see the password of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now something else really useful is if you look over here, we have the fake log on screen to file. All right, so this is going to be very useful. If you want to be able to capture the user information remotely, say you do not have a, an opening or vulnerability in the computer. And what you need to do now is to capture the password once the user enters it on the keyboard. So in that case, we can use fake logon screen to file.exe and send that file over through the internet and whatnot and then be able to capture the password. And to make this all possible, what I've done here is I've created a BAT file that can help us execute all of that. So the first thing we do is we check whether the user.db file exists. If it does, I want to remove it. The reason is because there's a lot of credentials that can get added up every time you execute a file. So I want to do that cleanly. Next up, what we do is we execute the fake log on screen to file.exe. And what we're doing that, only when the executable completes, then we begin sending the information through Netcat over into the Colonix IP address. Because right now, all the Windows computer come by default with Netcat available. So we can use that to help us get that file over the internet. So what I can do right now, I can go ahead and close the file. All right. And in this case, we have the fake logon screen loin.bat. And what I need to do in Kyle Linux is just to set it up. So go ahead and to say Netcat. All right. And then followed by port 4444. And now we're listening. And what I can do now is I can go back over into the Windows computer and I double clicked on this. It of course, now begin the execution of the fake Windows logon. And what I do now is I go and enter the password. Okay. And once I'm done, I hit enter on that. Completed. I jump back over to Kyle Linux and I can see right here at following. Loyal Yang Yang, 1234567 That's the correct password. 